I noticed some uncomfortable signs that were showing up in my own marriage. I'd always been a people watcher and wondered at the confluence of so many changes in society since my youth as I watched. The one video more showed up and pretty soon I had become conversant with the possible signs of cheating and the laundry list of standard excuses this made me more sensitive to my wife's behavior at the company barbecue in the summer. I noticed that one junior partner, George Goebel, and one senior partner, Reed Martin, were being a little bit too close to my wife for my comfort. I knew that my wife was currently the main assistant for the projects that each was working on, so it might be my imagination. Still, I decided to make sure I had phone numbers of all the partners and their spouses in case I needed them in the future. A couple of weeks later, we met with our friend and neighbor group for a picnic, and I noticed that my wife was showing a particular interest in Jim and even Ron. Well, now I have a few other suspects, their phone numbers and the numbers for their wives were already in my phone. Since I don't have any brothers, that usual suspect category didn't need need to be worried about. I should mention here that my wife is very social and frequently involved in the more lively interactions that any of these get. Togethers, everything could be completely innocent. Still, I investigated hidden cameras and voice-activated recording devices. I work at a semiconductor company and definitely have geek tendencies doing this myself. Was more cost-effective than hiring a PI. I found some that I could integrate with the doorbell camera that we already had and purchased enough to cover the living and family rooms and the only bedrooms that still had beds. One bedroom had become my office and another had become my wife's craft and sewing room. This was done a couple of weeks before my trip and I had checked during that time that it was all working. The server for all of this was the desktop in my office, which I always left on notifications, were suppressed, unless I intentionally inquired. I initially was not trying to actively surveil my wife. I just wanted a record that I could do a post-mortem on. This would also keep any notifications from popping up on the screen in case my wife happened to be in my office. Other notifications would continue, but none for the surveillance equipment. A week before my trip, I met with a lawyer. I explained that I wasn't ready yet, but wanted to know parameters. In case it became relevant, we went over the realities if that became necessary. And it didn't look good for me. At least the kids were out of the house, so child support would not be relevant. My daughter and the second oldest were in college, and the third boy had chose trade school. The oldest had begun his career recently. I'll still live in state and returned home to visit. Periodically, my trip had been for a week-long workshop, followed by visit to a nearby satellite facility that was having problems in an area of my expertise. The troubleshooting went well. Leaving me to go home a couple of days early, I chose to surprise my wife and see if we could take advantage of my early return. Well, one can hope that now brings me to the beginning of my story, wondering why a car besides mine or my wife's was in my driveway. It looks like my life life may have just changed if need be. I'll mourn later now I need my wits about me. I decided to park where I was and make my way to the side door where I could make a quieter entry as I passed the unknown car I checked and it was not locked. I checked the glove box and found a registration. This was Reed Martin car. I dialed Reed's wife after three rings. She answered Martin residence. Who is this? My name is Roger Stone. My wife is one of the admins at your husband's firm. Yes, I remember meeting you at some of the previous work gatherings. May I ask why you are reaching out to me? I may have some disturbing news. Do you know where your husband is at the moment he told me he was going to the country club to have some beers and play some cards with his buddies? Do you think he might be lying? Well, a black Mercedes S-Class with his registration is parked in my driveway. I wasn't aware that my house was part of the country club. Where do you live? I want to see for myself. 896 Little Elm Street, just a minute. I, I can be there in about 15 minutes. I'm about to enter my home. I'll try to leave the front door open for you. If it is open, let yourself in. The bedrooms are upstairs. See you soon, bye. I entered through the side door of the garage there. I picked up a Walther PPK out of the gun safe. What can... I say I like the James Bond movies next to the safe. I picked up a taser from its charging cradle. Hopefully I won't need anything more than this. I entered the house as quietly as I could through the kitchen. Mo and grunts of passion were heard from upstairs. I passed the living room where there were clothes dropped in a line going up the stairs. I noticed there was a wallet still in his jacket pocket. I dislodged it with my foot, and I then kicked it under the couch. I'm sorry it was a little thing, but I was pissed. I then unlocked the front door, quietly making my way upstairs to the master bedroom. I thought is this some ride of passage. 
Why do they seem to always have to do this in the marital bed? I got out my phone and began recording video. The door to the, the bedroom was cracked, and I slowly opened it and began filming them while he was plowing my wife. The moans and grunts were loud enough that they still were unaware of my presence. Well, it's time to light him up. I took the taser and pushed it into his left butt cheek. As his muscles tightened into convulsions, he pushed himself into my wife even harder since they were connected. She began convulsing also, and as her legs came together, she pushed him out. I noticed that his tool was quite large. Ouch! I said to myself without stopping the recording. I dialed 911. 911. What is your emergency? Hello, my name is Roger Stone. I've just come home to an intruder in my home sexually assaulting my wife. Please send the police immediately. Are you in immediate danger? I used to taser on him and he's currently out cold since they were engaged. When I hit him, my wife is out cold too. What is your address? 896 Little Elm Street. The door is unlocked. Please enter when you arrive. I've been videoing since since I entered the bedroom. I'll be happy to share the video when the police arrive. There is a car near you. They should be at your place in about 12 minutes. Please stay on the line until they arrive. I'm noticing some bleeding from my wife as I look at him. He's pretty big. He may have damaged her internally. Please also send an ambulance. Yes, sir, we will. When he started to stir, I hit him again with the taser that felt good about 10 minutes later. I heard the front door open and then someone wandering downstairs for a minute before beginning to come up the stairs. A moment later, Janet Martin appeared behind me. Wow, why would he want an older model like my wife, even if she is still very attractive? I motioned her to be quiet. She noticed that I was on a call to 911. I changed the screen to show that I was also videoing the scene she took in the scene with her husband passed out on the floor and winced when she noticed my wife bleeding. I motioned for her to come close so I could whisper to her the police should be here soon. Would you help them enter when you hear them arrive? Would you also remove the holster with my gun in it and place it on the floor behind me just before you go to let the police in? A few moments later, we heard the car arrive in front. She placed the gun in its holster on the floor and went to let the police in as the officer came up behind me. He pointed at the gun on the floor. I motioned him forward so he could see the scene and that I was videoing the episode I brought it with me in case I needed to defend myself. When he woke up, I'd managed to keep him subdued with two other hits with the taser since the initial stun. I had the lady who let you and move it from my belt to the floor when you arrived. He's just stirring now. I would like to press breaking and entering and sexual assault charges. Would you like to talk to the 911 operator? The officer indicated that he understood and signed off with the 911 operator. Then he began the process of reading him his rights as he handcuffed him and led him to the squad car. I'm sorry, but I really enjoyed seeing him being taken to the squad car while still naked. The officer on the main level had been talking to Janet and asked me about the charges I was pressing. He is not welcome in my home and is thus an intruder. He was also was actively engaged with my wife, and it appears that she may be suffering some internal damage. The ambulance that just arrived is for her. What do you think should I drop the charges or force him to admit on the public record that he was having an affair with my wife by the way she has been out since I first TOS him and I have not been able to talk to her to ascertain her position? Janet spoke up and said I'm his wife and I am comfortable with intruder and sex offender labels the EMTs entered and I indicated that they should go upstairs in a moment they came downstairs with her and put her on the gurney and went to the hospital. I inquired as to which hospital so that I could see her later. He asked if I wanted to come and I said I had things to take care of. I trust the doctors and my wife seems to be lucid and can make most decisions on her own. They left with her as they left. I turned to Janet. Are you okay? Not really, but I'll get through this, she asked. How are you so calm? I've decided to mourn later if I lose it emotionally. Now my family will regret it. I need to press on until I finish seeing where my wife and I are at. You're his second wife because he cheated on his first wife. I assume that you signed a prenup. Does is his infidelity help you out, actually? Yes, I suspected others, but had no proof. The way you handled things provides a public record. Thank you, there may be more. I had much of the house rigged for video and sound. Your husband wasn't only one that I was suspicious of. Let me know if you need anything else. Thanks and keep in touch. I kicked his wallet under the couch in an expression of disgust. I'll retrieve it for you and you can take his clothes also.
With that, she gathered his belongings, having first gotten many pictures of the clothes on the floor, and is being led out of the house naked. Then she got in her car and drove away. I decided to get a light dinner and then do a proper post-mortem with the videos from the surveillance system the next morning, after discovering that Reed had only been there two other times, and no one else had I organized the relevant videos and put them on my phone and several thumb drives, I then went to see my wife in the hospital. I called Janet and asked if she wanted to meet me there. She agreed, why didn't you come with me to the hospital, I'm your wife. Think about how I found you and if, see, your question is answered at any rate. What did the doctors find? My cervix is pretty badly damaged. It's a good thing that my tubes are already tied as that cervix will never pass a baby again. Janet has some questions for you. How long were you banging him? That was the first time, I swear. Try again. I said, if you want any chance for us to survive as a couple, you will be completely truthful with both of us. Okay, two months, maybe ten times. The last three times were at our house. He really wanted to do it in my marital bed. I can verify the three times in our home, what how need to know basis. And you don't currently need to know something about trust issues. How to... Did it start as our youngest was getting ready to go off to college? I started feeling old as others around me started complimenting me. I started light flirting with them to keep the compliments and attention coming. I broke in. Let me guess. Reed and George at work and our friends Jim and Ron H. How did you know? Continue with answering her question. I had a few lunches with each but only progressed to dinners with Reed. We finally became intimate just two months ago. Roger, my temporary insanity had nothing to do with you. It was all me. Maybe you were right. Maybe this is how I hit my wall. Who else did he sleep with that? You know about? Do I have to tell you trust issues? I said I know about the other two admits. He sometimes even did both together. It was their stories that initial pique my lust and let me to focus on him. They said he had a big tool and really knew how to use it. I'm proof that it is big. He marred my cervix for life. Good thing. I now longer need it. Still, it will be a while before I can even try to have intimacy again as far as knowing how, how to use it. I think he just relies on size and his partner's anticipation. My husband is much more understanding and kind now that I've experienced both. I find I prefer my husband, although I'm not sure if that is even possible anymore. I agree with your assessment. Said Janet, at first his size did bring me to higher highs and more of them he has reasonable stamina too, but his repertoire is actually fairly limited and after a while it just tends to hurt. He's actually pretty inconsiderate during intimacy. I've been putting him off as often as I could for a while now. Say, do you know how the other admins felt about him moving on to you? I think they were a bit disappointed that he stopped banging them. I think they only did three ways to keep him interested. Maybe their younger bodies could tolerate his size and roughness better. Did he express why he moved on to you from the younger admins? He said he had a more emotional connection with me thinking about it. I think he just wanted me because I was married and they were not Roger. I know you've charged him with sexual assault, but I don't think my previous actions will let that stand up in court. I'm really sorry I never thought it would stand up in court. I just wanted him to have to put on the public record that he was screwing other people's wives. I'm grateful for that, said. Janet, I talked to my lawyer this morning and he says it looks really good. Roger, can you give me a copy of the video you shot that day for my lawyer video? Said Deborah. need to know Deborah here. Janet, this thumb drive has that video in the other videos too. Would it be okay not to use other videos unless absolutely necessary videos, plural asked? Deborah Janet replied, I'll not use any of them if the court record is sufficient. Will that do? Yes, that will do, Roger. I know I really screwed up, but they say I'll be released in a couple of days. Can I come home? Yeah, reluctantly, but I'm not willing to sleep in our old bedroom. You have to sleep there by yourself. I'd rather not either, but I guess it's my burden to bear. Janet spoke up. I have an idea. I agree that you will probably not be able to make the sexual assault charge stick. And even if you did, we probably could not get a conviction. How about sexual harassment in the workplace since all the admins worked for him? If I get the other two admins to join in a lawsuit, we probably could make that stick. We might be able to sue. Both my soon-to-be ex-husband and the firm let me get my divorce underway, and then I'll work on that. I know I really screwed up. I'd be happy to join such a lawsuit. I hope it will allow me to build back a little of the trust one lost, I asked. Is Reed out on bail? Yet not yet. I refuse to post bail, and given the stink associated with the sexual assault charge, the firm isn't willing to do it either. I've already applied for and gotten a restraining order on him due to the sexual assault charge again, thank you. 
Janet was true to her word, she contacted the other admin, and a sexual harassment lawsuit was filed two weeks after her divorce suit because of the sexual harassment lawsuit and the internal damage to my wife. It was harder to dismiss the sexual assault charge, and with that, the breaking and entering charge with it. Eventually, we had a sympathetic jury who decided to convict him on the charges against him. He got seven to ten years. Two days later, Janet's divorce was final, and she was a free woman. What she didn't get in the divorce was mostly taken by the harassment lawsuit all three women did well in the settlement, although the company paid the lion's share. Surprisingly, they all kept their jobs there. Seems to be less of an air of hanka-panky around the office, too. Well, we'll see how long that lasts. My wife and I lived as mutual tenants, SLG good friends, when the children came home from college to visit. She accepted the responsibility to properly inform the children of what had happened, although they were initially incensed at their mother. I talked them down from their anger, and they eventually found a form of reconciliation. The real surprise was Janet. After she had time to settle things after the divorce, she approached Deborah. And I, Roger, did you finally get that chance to mourn what once was and no longer it is? Yeah, I think mostly, so I still struggle with the mental imagery of that day. I've only been able to go into the master bedroom for routine maintenance functions. I can't stay long. I'm okay with Deborah as the mother of my children and a friend. But I'm not sure if I can resume intimacy. Has Deborah seen the video you shot that day? No, I wasn't sure how she would take it, and they became painful memories once I finally allowed myself to grieve and mourn. I think she needs to see it. I fell in love with you that day, the way you kept your wits about you and dealt with the situation in spite of the pain you were suppressing for a later time. Will you allow me to show it to her if she is willing? I've been dreading it. But I probably need to see it if only to empathize with Roger and what I put him through, then come with me. I have it loaded up on this tablet moments later. Oh my God, how the hell did he not throttle me if even shoot me? And Reed, I know he has guns in the safe in the garage. He actually had one on him as he began videoing. He had me remove it and put it on the floor just, just before I let the police in. I think he wanted to diffuse a potentially difficult situation and relieve some potential anxiety on the part of the police officers. I really could have died. How could I have been so stupid? Do you want to see the other videos? Hell no. I already know how stupid and disrespectful I was. I don't need more nightmares. Speaking of nightmares, he had to watch all of those while preparing for a possible divorce. I think it speaks of his character that he found it within himself to let you come home and live in the same house with him. I don't think there are many men who could maintain their dignity and do that on top of that. He still wanted to protect you and asked me to repress the videos if they weren't needed. After they returned, Deborah said I was the stupid one, and it hurt me to watch myself be that disrespectful to my husband at the same time I grew in admiration of the calm, collected way he dealt with what looked like the end of his family. I'm really sorry, Roger. Thank you for the forgiveness you've shown so far. Roger, why did you let me come home? That must have been excruciating for you. It was really hard, but the fallout from kicking you to the curb seemed somehow worse to me. You had genuinely apologized and shown real remorse. I thought there might be a chance for reconciliation. The trials allowed somewhat of a distraction and kept me from completely falling apart, but also delayed working through the grief. We were quiet for a while Janet spoke up. I fell in love with Roger on that day, and my respect and love only grew as this process unfolded. I'm a free woman now, and if Roger were to decide to divorce you, I would do my best to swoop in and make him mine instead. I would like to make a different proposal. I've actually grown to care about you as well. Deborah, I've watched you do your best to own up to your mistakes and breach of trust. I know how persistent and charming my ex can be. I'm not sure you stood much of a chance against his pursuit. So this is my proposal, Deborah. If you would be willing to share Roger with me, I would be willing to encourage him to finish reconnecting with you, even in the bedroom. I have so fallen in love with Roger through this process process that I can't really imagine being with anyone else conversely. I also greatly admire you and don't want to see you further destroyed. Wow, Janet. I said that's pretty outside the box, thinking on the one hand I'd like to be able to go back to the way things were with Deborah. I mostly liked my world before it blew apart. On the other hand, I've come to greatly respect you, Janet, with how much you have helped everyone except the scumbags. And you're sexy as hell if I were divorced. I would jump at the chance to be with you. Tell you what, let me think about it for a while. A week later, I invited me wife and Janet to a dinner at a nice restaurant after a nice meal with some pleasant bander. 
I said, tell you what, if you two can get the kids to buy off on the arrangement and they are willing to welcome a crazy Aunt Janet that also sleeps with their dad. Then I'll accept, my wife commented, if accepting Janet into the family can help heal the rift that I caused. Then, that is a price I will gladly pay. I really like you too. Janet? Janet spoke again. I know that Deborah had an STD test as part of her hospitalization. And this is the result that I took when I thought of this solution she handed me an envelope. It's been even longer for me than for Deborah, since we had that oversized tool used on us. Ugh, please don't remind me anyway. I think we have probably reverted to a more normal tightness now since Deborah tells me that you, Roger, are on the slightly large side of normal. You should fit both of us. Well, I also know that Deborah was cleared to resume intimacy three months ago. Another benefit is that we can all move into my paid-for house that came as part of the settlement. There are more bedrooms, plus an office craft room and library that would also let you leave your house and its specter of what happened those many months ago. I responded, okay, you two convinced the kids by... Dang, if they didn't do it, I think the larger, nicer house in the pool helped they had also gotten to know Janet during the process, as we had worked with each other through the previous court cases, and apparently liked her the day after after we moved in. Janet said to Deborah, let me take the lead, and took my hand and led me into the primary master bedroom, her room. Since it had been so long, I didn't last as long as I would have liked. How long till your body can be ready again? I don't know, we never tried that before. Too much life got in the way. Look, my former husband used to go at least twice and as many as five times. I'm not letting you escape without at least three tries. You need your mojo back. Turns out it's a little over 15 minutes. The second time she was able to peek just before I did. The third time she peeked three times before I did. So this is what people were raving about. After that, we fell asleep in each other's arms the following night. Janet took me to the secondary master bedroom, Deborah's room, since you also slept with my ex-husband. I know you can go more than one route. I suspect that was one of the main reasons that you stayed in the affair as long as you did, in spite of the growing discomfort due to his size and lack of tact and empathy. We managed three rounds last night. I expect the same from you. Deborah took my hand and let me to bed. We succeeded, and we didn't have to use the vibrator. We held each other as we cried ourselves to sleep. The office was roomy, had its own 3-4 bath, and we put in a Murphy bed with a wardrobe. It became my room when I needed space. Luckily, neither Janet or Deborah was desperate for intimacy, and we settled into about four times per week between the two of them. I could cope with that. I was also grateful that every session did not include multiple tries. I'm not sure I could have survived. We never had a threesome, for which I was grateful I had grown to love both women and didn't want our relationships to devolve into just animalistic pleasure. We sold our previous house and put the proceeds into savings earmarked to help the kids finish schooling when the family was all at home visiting for the holidays. We announced that there was going to be an addition to the family. Everybody celebrated and Janet was just beginning to show the two cheaters' lives were forever changed. Deborah, who in a time of personal insecurity sought out validation from outside of the marriage, became the victim of a master manipulator in order to restore a semblance of her former life. She had to accept another bed partner for her aggrieved husband. Reed lost virtually everything, including his freedom as to the spouses who were cheated on. I got to keep my family intact. Although things were never quite the same, I still cried myself to sleep sometimes times when I slept in my office, bedroom, Janet got to have a man she had grown to love and respect, and was okay with the fact that Deborah and I still had a relationship, she got to choose this relationship, as opposed to discovering another affair partner besides. I think she actually enjoyed the looks from other couples those times we attended social functions as a threesome. Neither woman was worried about me cheating as I barely kept up in the bedroom. Deborah had the cheater scared out of her, and Janet's presence was a constant reminder Janet had had enough of men without sized egos and was thoroughly enjoying the larger family that she had joined in the prospect of her own children being raised in family that had already raised for successful adults who would have guessed that in a little over a year we had progressed from a family on the brink of destruction to an expanded, intact, happy but unusual family life is full of miracles, dear listeners. Help us reach 1,000 subscribers on YouTube. Something super special awaits once we hit that milestone. Subscribe now and join the fun.